Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the school board, and newly appointed superintendent. Mayor, thank you for that introduction. Um, we're really excited and want to thank you for this opportunity to present to you concerning the multi-tiered systems of supports initiative that WJCC schools began exploring in the 2014-2015 school year. A multi-tiered system of support, or MTSS, is a database decision-making framework that supports the academic, behavioral, and social-emotional needs of our students. Essentially, what this means is that it allows us to take a look at what skill sets our students are coming to us with, whether it be academic or behavior, and develop supports and interventions to meet them where they are. It requires us as adults to ask ourselves, are we setting our students up for success or failure? And if we are setting our stu students up for failure, what are we going to do differently? It's about looking at the reasons why students are functioning the way they are, either with academics or behavior, and putting things into place in order to address that reason. The graphic above illustrates the framework that we use to build those interventions and supports needed for our students to be successful, and I'm going to explain it to you using a medical analogy. We are going to pretend that we are a panel of disease prevention specialists, and we are tasked with keeping the public well in a, a flu outbreak, which is timely. <laughs> if we were on that panel, we would most likely start with proactive and preventative measures, like washing our hands, getting plenty of rest, eating a healthy diet, and possibly getting a flu shot. All those proactive and preventative measures that will keep most of us well during an outbreak. When we look at this in terms of MTSS, we're talking about Tier 1 or universal supports. These are things we have in place for all of our students, like school-wide expectations, acknowledgement systems, and clear discipline procedures. And those basic supports are going to work for the majority of our students, just like those proactive and preventative measures are going to keep most of us well during a flu outbreak. But unfortunately, some of us are still going to get sick. And we're going to end up at the doctor because we may have a secondary condition, like asthma, that requires us to need medication or other supports in order to get better. At times, we have students whose needs move to a Tier 2 level and require additional supports, like social skills groups, targeted small group instruction, or a peer mentor. For most of us, once we have that medicine, we will get better, just like most of our students, when they receive that additional layer of support, will be successful. But for a very few, few of us, that will not be enough, and we have our needs that move to Tier 3. When you're very sick and medicine hasn't worked, you'll sometimes end up in the hospital, where we can collect very specific data and apply a very specific intervention. This is the same for MTSS. At times, we have students whose needs require intensive and individualized supports. What's great about this process is that we're not starting from scratch, as many of our schools have some of these pieces already in place. Our goal is to provide a framework that allows each school to take a look at what they're doing well and solidify that, as well as fill in the gaps um, that they identify related to instructional and behavioral supports. While we're looking to build and solidify the supports we have in place across all three tiers of the triangle, our main focus as we begin implementation is on building a solid foundation on the behavioral side. We recognize the impact that behavior has on the learning environment, and behavior is the focus of our MTSS process at this time. As we're building that continuum of supports for behavior, the theme is consistency. Consistency involves a common vision, common language, and common practices. What's so powerful, I think, about this process is that that consistency is based in the framework that's provided, but everything else is unique based on the individual school's needs. It allows schools to have conversations around what do they expect from their students and staff, and then how does that unfold across the school day. We ask questions like, how should our students walk in the hallways? How should we be speaking to each other and handling conflict, and what does it mean to really show respect? Some of our leaders recently had the opportunity to, sh to share some examples of what implementation looks like at their schools, and we're going to share some of that with you now. It takes ideas and our positions and asks us to take a look at what we're doing as adults. 
how it affects students. Um, it is a process that involves students, parents, and teachers and administrators with developing structures, systems to help students. Having gone through the very deliberate process of defining our expectations and taking it a step further to being very specific by describing what it looks like and what it sounds like from our students' perspective, then we've been able to um, be more consistent as a learning community and trying to be very deliberate in involving as many staff members as is possible and who are accessible during times of training so that we are constantly um, being as consistent as we can with what we expect of our students, how we're holding our students accountable, and how we're communicating with our students and our families. We remind our students every day that DJ is a safe place, a caring place, and a learning place, but what exactly does that look like? Um, so we took each of those, um, those themes and we described what the behaviors would look like in the classroom, in the cafeteria, at recess, at walk and talk, and we created visuals that are displayed around the school with our, mus our uh, mascot, Monty the Mustang, um, demonstrating for the students what those types of behaviors would look. Um, would look like. It's allowed us to really come together as teams. So I've sat down myself, the counselor, the psychologist in some cases with the teachers and with their teams as well to kind of brainstorm, okay, Johnny's doing this and he might be doing it because it's attention seeking. So what are some things we can put in place to kind of um, avoid those behaviors? So we've been able to have those conversations as a team. Um, with MTSS, it's a data-driven process. So we looked at a significant amount of data where behaviors were occurring where academic struggles were occurring and from the data we made decisions based on data so it's not an emotional thing it's not a, a hey a shotgun approach where we're just we're trying to hit something we're really dialing down the data saying here's where the behavior is occurring what, what are we going to do about it here where the academic struggles are occurring what are we going to do about it the deficits um, the second important piece was to um, help the teachers uh, understand the purpose of, of MTSS and we want to make sure that we're creating classroom environments for learning where students are safe um, and that minor disruptions are not taking place. So the, this focus is on um, tier one, all of the students in the classrooms and what we're doing to support their behavior. So we had to educate the teachers a little bit on distinguishing between those minor disruptions in the classrooms that they can handle through this system by positively reinforcing the good behavior versus those behaviors um, that are uh, more disruptive um, and would require administrative assistance. Research indicates that schools typically take five to seven years to reach full implementation. Looking at the graphic that's on the screen, you can note that our schools are at the first three phases, exploration, <coughs> installation, and initial implementation. We currently have no schools who are in full implementation as we are just beginning the second year of the process. To structure the implementation process, we adopted a comprehensive framework based on guidance from the Virginia Department of Education. As demonstrated in the chart, we formed a WJCC division level leadership team to facilitate, monitor, evaluate, and coordinate the division wide implementation process. Through a series of full day trainings in the summer and half day professional development sessions, we established a core group of building-based MTSS coaches and administrators to facilitate and lead the process at the building level. These coaches and administrators form building-based MTSS teams comprised of teachers, school counselors, and other appropriate staff to engage in dialogue, examine school-based data, and propose interventions to respond to trends in discipline and school climate. The division leadership team reviewed school-based progress with several assessment tools and used this data to adjust trainings and to provide additional support. We want to show you a few examples of what products the schools are developing as they move through implementation. Here you see a poster that one of our elementary schools is using to promote positive relationships within the classroom. Students are prompted each day to identify how they wish to be greeted as they enter the school with a hug, a handshake, a high five, or hello. 
The second example is one school's work around promoting a growth mindset in our students. This illustrates how we want our students to apply problem-solving skills to whatever challenge they are facing during the day. This poster is an example of school-wide expectations at the secondary level. They are asking their students to take flight by using focus, leadership, inspiration, global awareness, honor, and tolerance to guide them through their day. Our goal for MTSS is to impact culture and climate in a way that allows our students to maximize their time in the classroom setting. We will be looking at a number of factors in order to determine impact, including student and faculty surveys, minor infractions, and discipline referrals. One of the data points we are required to submit is our division's annual discipline, crime, and violence report. The chart you are seeing displays a three-year comparison of our data. The report represents out-of-school suspensions used as the intervention for violations of our student code of conduct. While several factors have contributed to changes in our discipline data, we believe that the various trainings on function of behavior, the implementation process for school-wide systems of support, and professional development concerning restorative versus punitive disciplinary practices has contributed to last year's data. Moving forward, discipline data will become more readily available through the implementation of a school-wide information system, which is called SWIS, that is being piloted this semester in a few of our schools. This tool will allow school-based teams to analyze data around minor and major infractions and use this information to guide implementation of interventions. Finally, we want to leave you with the voices of our leaders on the impact of MTSS thus far. Each administrator highlights a different aspect of their school and has been impacted by the implementation process. The culture, number one, by far, the, the, the positive impact it's had in student culture where they're feeling part of the school. Um, one of the tremendous things that we, we did is that um, one of the complaints you hear sometimes about incentive programs, and this is not really an incentive program, but incentive programs, well, well that kid got re uh, rewarded for his good behavior, but there was five others that did the same thing. MTSS has a way of recognizing all of the students. And so all the students felt inclusive in, in the, the culture that we were building. One thing that's really been impactful in our school is the teacher conversations. Um, academics is always like a focal point. Behavior is now on that same level and caliber in terms of teachers collaborating with each other, having conversations about behavior, what can we do differently, and also being more proactive and preventive. Our teachers are attending the MTSS meetings um, and they're coming with some concerns that they have about their students and they're leaving with a plan for how to address um, those disruptive behaviors in the classroom so they can focus on teaching and the students can focus on learning. And I think that's a huge piece that the teachers have a voice that we're there to support them. Why are we doing things this way? Is there another way? Um, and uh, it's causing some it's causing some wonderful conversations, some wonderful, wonderfully uncomfortable conversations. So I think the students are thinking more about their behaviors and then the teachers feel supported and that they're getting some strategies. They're not just filling out these forms. We're really sitting down and we're looking at them and trying to come up with ways to support them. So I think the teachers are, are on board and they are buying into the program. That we are using this process as a way to con be more reflective and step back from the process more often throughout the school year and think about where are we being successful and where do we have opportunities to strengthen um, our program so that ultimately every student is the most effective learner he or she can be. We would like to thank you for this opportunity <coughs> to present this evening. 